I'm filming in my boyfriend's room today. Let's see if this works. I thought I'd chat about what life in quarantine has been like and all the things I have been feeling about it. I will eventually get sick of quarantine content, but right now it's all that's on my bloody mind. So it's worth having a chat, I think, and just talking about what's been going on and all the things that have been cropping up in my brain. I always do this weird cheers thing. I don't know why. Like, I don't do that with real people. This vest is from Everlane and I absolutely love it. It is so soft. And this is from Anthropology. I'll link both in the description. I have my bag of supplies. This is my Victoria Beckham Beauty bag of tricks. Not all of this is Victoria Beckham. I'm just gonna put on some makeup, but more importantly, have a chat. I just feel like the makeup breaks it up a bit, you know? I bought this recently, I don't know how I feel about it. It's the Luminous Blur Stick from Milk Makeup. So first of all, how are you doing? This is such a weird time for everyone, and I'm sure you'll agree, especially if you are quarantining somewhere or locking down somewhere that is not your actual home or like your typical home, which I know so many people are doing and I'm also in the same boat as you know. And I've actually had so many thoughts on what, what it's like, what it is, what it means. The main thing I've realized is that I always thought I was immune, not immune, but that I saw through the whole Instagram aesthetic and like craving perfection where it doesn't exist kind of thing. Or like following people and feeling inferior as well, for example. I kind of thought I was like, not above that, but like I kind of knew it, you know? Like I was an internet native that I kind of got it, especially as part of it's my job. But since I've been in isolation, I've really noticed that like there is a like home aesthetic that goes along with so many lifestyle creators channels and having that removed from me and being put in a house of four boys has made it quite stark that that is like quite an unattainable ideal and also how much I like created my home to be shot. Yeah, it's been odd because I just didn't realize how much of my home was based in like how I was gonna film, how how I would like it to look on camera, how I would like it to be shot by me or like little corners where I can, you know, take a makeup photo. I'd really thought that shit through without even realizing I'd thought it through. And then being thrown into an environment where that does not exist, like the hallway where they keep the mirror, pretty much no natural light, um, unless you open the bedroom windows. And then stuff like this room is beautiful sun in the morning, but then absolutely like I'm filming I'm pushing it here I'm filming at like 12. Another thing I forgot is my beauty blender so I'm currently blending with my fingers. Feels very weird with a thicker foundation. You gotta make do. I saw a great post about this on Sophia Tassau Tassu. I'm so sorry Sophia I've never known how to pronounce your surname and I won't pretend I know now but um her Instagram she did a post on realizing you know and feeling the pressure to have the aesthetic home that so many influencers have. And she talked about how, you know, she loved her bedroom um, her, in her old place, but you know, you couldn't have like photographed it. Like it just wasn't appropriate for that kind of thing, but she still loved the space itself. The longer I've lived in London, the more I've lent towards picking homes with big windows, uh, wooden floors. If I could, like I get a parquet floor. Is that what I mean? Is that what it's called? But like, you know, really nice open spaces with good light on higher floors so that they, get as much light as possible, white walls as well, or I'd paint them now that I'm a bit older, but like stuff like that has always been a priority for me, a much more of a priority than I'd even realized. And the irony is at the same time, I am like fully obsessed with how my home looks and feels. Like I really adore what a home feels like. The way, it's like your space, do you know what I mean? In the same way that your bedroom was as a kid and you kind of really make it feel like yours and have your favorite things on the walls and you know display your favorite I don't know toys and books and whatever it's the same with like my bedroom now like I'm always thinking about how I'm gonna make it look the most me possible and the same with my whole space and then being here is just so out of that and actually it's really made working quite hard for me because I didn't realize again just how much my work depended on how my space looks how much light it gets like where I have to film is so dependent on the space I live in and now it's been removed from me it feels very weird to try and make things look aesthetic and look gorgeous and pretty and nice when I'm in a house that has minimal decoration but also like male decoration but even more than that decoration that wasn't designed to be filmed they've got things that are sentimental to them on the walls but there are angles that you wouldn't see on camera for example yeah I just never really thought about all of these dynamics until I was 
inner space and a head space, I guess, where they came up, which is now, and now I'm just kind of thrust into it. It was kind of like that when I lived at my parents' house as well, just after I graduated. I like built that room up to feel like my own again, but then obviously I was able to order bedding and like, I don't know, I just, I'd like buy little things at the Tate Modern to put on the walls, like little postcards and like fairy lights. It feels like I can't really do that stuff here. Like I am gonna go home, hopefully within the next month. I hope we're all able to go home in the next month. I know it's optimistic, but so there's not really much point in doing all of that stuff. Um, and I'm obviously not gonna pop home and grab things. But yeah, it's, it's funny, isn't it? Like you really realize what's going on. <laughs> What's really been going on under the under the hood in many ways, not just interior decorating ways. Also, I got this mug while I've been in isolation just because I was like, I need a big homey mug. <laughs> um, I brought some stuff here, but I only brought two suitcases. So one big, one small and just packed like one suitcase was just equipment and bedding. Uh, some people don't necessarily realize, totally fair uh, that you wouldn't know, but like you need quite a lot of equipment to be able to film and edit. And like I write on my, on my um, videos so I have, I'll show you. No, I won't, I can't grab it, but I've got this massive old like Wacom drawing tablet, uh, stuff like that. Like there's just, there's quite a lot of equipment involved. So one suitcase was that, the other suitcase was my clothes and that's kind of it really. <laughs> By the way, this was also a new purchase. I did a cult beauty order, which I'm gonna show you properly and fully in another video. I'm gonna do a haul video. What the fuck? That is what quarantine is coming to. <laughs> I just have acquired a lot of things while I've been here and I thought it'd be nice to show you them. But yeah, this is the It Cosmetics CC Illumination Color Correcting Illuminating Full Coverage uh, Cream. I normally don't get the illuminating and I accidentally ordered the illuminating this time around. How many more times can I say illuminating? Oh, I don't know how I feel about it. It's a little glowy for me. Either like a very sheer glowy base or quite a matte base that I can add like I can like blend out into like more sheerness. I don't necessarily love like a very glowy thing. Cause I used to have oily skin and I think that's like a hangover from it. As per Marc Jacobs bronzer, as you know, I'm on a mission to try and use up as many products as possible before I buy new ones all the time. So much has changed. Not even so much has changed. I said this online, but I don't love the way people are describing this as the new normal. I don't think it is the new normal. I don't think we're gonna go straight back to exactly what we had, but I don't think it's helpful to refer to something so radically life-changing as not leaving the house as being the new normal. This is how I do my makeup pretty much every day uh, when it's like a more full face, which I haven't done while I've been here, but like just like a nice bit of like glow and kind of like sun-kissed. I also often add this, which is, as you know, the Glowgasm Beauty Light Wand in Peachgasm. Fuck it, might add a bit of that today. My relationship with food and lifestyle has really been very interesting while I've been here. Uh, mainly because who knew that quarantine has dredged up some unpleasant ways I think about food, which I really wasn't expecting. Sorry, I pull my face so badly when I do makeup. <laughs> I'm probably talking to you like, yeah, I didn't have a great relationship with food growing up. I was really surprised that in quarantine, it's really like reared its head. I'm thinking about food so much and that's not good. It's the closest I've come to calorie counting since uni. I'm gonna use that, I think, instead of highlight. Maybe I'll add a little bit of highlight. I'll add this Nude Sticks uh, Magnetic Nude Glimmers. Yeah, I just think a lot about food at the moment. Um, I've been better since this has gone on, which is why I'm talking about it now but at the beginning it was so hard. So we all team up and we make dinner together every evening as a house and take it in turns to make food. And that's great, but also boys have big portions. So I'm being served these like huge plates of food, which is something that doesn't bother me when it happens twice or three times a week, if that. But when it's like constant, <laughs> it's quite a lot to deal with because I will eat what's on my plate. Like I'm not good at leaving food. And on top of that, just like routine changing so much, not being able to move the same way I was able to move about before. And the boys don't cook the way I cook. Like when I'm at home, I try and make quite fresh. Like I didn't even know that I cooked like this. I didn't know. I remember Hannah one time said I was one of her healthiest friends. And I was like, don't be silly. Like I, I eat quite well and well-rounded, but I also don't really like, I have a kebab like, every so often but I'm and like takeaway and stuff but I like healthy food quite a lot so you know I eat fruit with breakfast and da, 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 all that stuff we had a ragu the other day and it had half a bottle of pork in it and it was delicious don't get me wrong but 
I was like, oh my God, this is like indulgence. Like I'm like on holiday right now. And on top of that drinking more than usual, I obviously have to be quite careful with how I drink. That's kind of like how I've been my, not my whole life, but since, since I dabbled in sobriety, I've had to be a lot more careful. And um, you know, alcohol will never be a simple thing for me. But then like, I am drinking here quite a lot. Not a lot as in, big quantities because that's never been how I drink in the house but often there is alcohol everywhere and I'm not mad about it <laughs> a lot of the time I've got this routine now where I work in the day until about six uh, you know I'm getting up later as well so I'll be like working between 10 and 11 starting work and then done at six and then I'll like sit down and have my like nice glass of wine I'll play Spyro or like have a call with my parents or something. It just breaks up the day. I think I spoke about it in my most recent, uh, uh, I think I spoke about it in my most recent vlog. This by the way is the Glossier Brow Flick in brown, I guess. I'm gonna use it to draw in some extra hairs and define my big brows. But yeah, because I've kind of taught myself to feel guilty about drinking, which isn't helpful, but also is kind of necessary on some level. I now feel guilt about drinking every day. Like I keep a habit tracker. I haven't been able to tick off the no alcohol one for a month. <laughs> it's not good. So yeah, I kind of have like guilt around that, which is like not fun to deal with, but also kind of unnecessary. Cause also I'm not in environments that I find like typically triggering and I need to be very, very careful in. It's hard to know like what's a sustainable or like acceptable coping mechanism in like an unprecedented time like this, which is what this is, and what is creating a bad habit. And also I really advocate never being too hard on yourself because we are human after all, but I don't like the idea that I'm gonna leave this isolation period and then want to drink every day. I don't think that's good. But then again, I don't think I will because I'll be leaving the house and I'll be stimulated in other ways and my day will be broken up in like way more effective ways. Where is my brow gel? Here we go. Because I'm a Glossier ho, this is the boy brow in brown. I don't know, it'll be interesting seeing how things change. I miss gigs. I'm very excited to have gigs again. Won't be for a while yet, but we can keep wishing. Something that has changed obviously financially is that I don't know when I'm getting work. Some things about my life just haven't changed at all. Like for example, I often work in my house. So I feel quite comfortable working indoors and not in an office. But then some things are like, oh my God, like I don't have like any guaranteed income for like any amount of time in the future. And that's quite scary. I brought this palette with me cause I've never used it. And I bought it while I was in LA in October. It's so pretty. It's the Lilac palette from Kylie Cosmetics. If you haven't tried a Kylie Cosmetics palette, would highly, highly recommend. They are so good. But I don't know if today is the Lilac eye day. The blue blue color is so nice. I would love to do a smoky eye with that at some point. I've got a plan to do a video where I do my makeup uh, relative to my zodiac sign, which is Pisces. So I might try and do like a Pisces tutorial. Not a tutorial, let's be real. I can't tutorial tutor anyone <laughs> on makeup, but I can practice and try. I might just slightly smoky eye with blueberry and stone. This is risky. I am scared. Well, first of all, I need a neutral color. Right. <laughs> I am so bad at making decisions that are brave. <laughs> I wore uh, the Glossier, what is this? Skywash in pool, I believe. Yeah, in pool the other day with a nice little blue dress that I've got. And my boyfriend walked up to me and went, what have you done to your eyes? Yeah, he thought I had an infection. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna do this like really base, like basic, basic shade. I think it's just quite neutral from what I remember. And then I'm gonna try and smoke out my lash line. I've really fallen back in love with Pinterest as well. I've been kind of on this house issue, like obsessing over interiors and creating new Pinterest boards and watching loads of videos on people's interiors. I realized that while this is kind of my aesthetic, it's not my whole aesthetic, which is quite relieving because I'm sure everyone will be like, I don't know, I talk about us all becoming like one, oh, uh, what's the word, monolithic influencer lifestyle thing and just all pushing people to just buy millennial pink and eucalyptus. But I do have other taste other things I like, and <laughs> I need to remember that. Let me tell you why I realized it as well. This is no comment on the lady herself, but I watched Millie McIntosh's home tour on YouTube. I'll link it, because, you know, get your views. But she 
has the blandest home I've ever seen. And then I got worried that I'm gonna have a bland home because I'm such like a, a molder. Like I don't even know what I truly like. I just blend with people and it freaks me out a bit. Here we go with the blue. Okay, so far it's okay. We've been watching all the Marvel films while we've been in uh, isolation. And I am nearly converted. Like I was all slagging it off on Twitter the other day, but actually like fair play. I'm getting there with this whole thing. I have quite oily skin at the moment, but like dry oily. Proper combo. I was thinking about doing like a how I get my life together when I have like a proper breakout video uh, because they come few and far between. So when I do have a breakout now, because that's because of my pill, not because of my skin. My skin is a wreck. When I do have a breakout now, it means I've really used and abused my skin. <laughs> like there has been stress, there has been bad food, drinks, sugar. So I was thinking about making a video being like, this is how I try and help my skin when everything has gone wrong. And I try and help my lifestyle. Um, let me know if you'd like to see that. I quite like this weird like grey shadow thing. It's quite fun, it makes me look a bit dead, but like witchy dead. It'll be interesting when I go downstairs to see what Jules says, because Jules does really good makeup. So if Jules likes it, then I'll be good. I don't know how to make this look any cuter, so we might just leave it. Oh my God, I also want to talk about, this is a bigger topic, but public shaming uh, at the moment has gone wild. <laughs> and I get it. We don't want any more people to get this horrible disease. Like it's really important in fact that people don't get this horrible disease. Specifically on Twitter, like there is so much like name calling, shaming, taking photos of people. It's from people that just don't know the context of what's going on. And also just in general, it's not a very nice thing to do. I do think like if you are actually worried about someone's behavior that you see, in a park or on the street, you should call the police. If you truly are that worried, you should be ringing the police. The only thing that could ever persuade me that this was a disease born in Russia and whatever conspiracy theory about that they created it would be that they were trying to create more division just in the same way all the elections have done, just in the same way the polarization has done. That does just seem to be what's going on and it's quite sad. Like, I don't wanna hate my neighbor because I saw her in the garden letting her son play with someone else's son. I don't approve of the decision for that to happen, but it just sucks, do you know what I mean? Like, it's not necessarily something to blast on the internet and be like, look at Pandora at number 27, you know? I know a lot of people won't agree with me on that, but that's okay, humans are allowed to have differing opinions. It's what makes the world so wonderful, and especially when it comes to people who ultimately have similar beliefs, but they are different, they're on a spectrum. I'm just so about having productive conversations. The government has really not helped, in my opinion. I don't think they've been clear enough in the whole situation, and that's quite sad because I think that's creating crazy amounts of division. But yeah, you never know what someone's experiencing. Like, I saw four guys cycling along the other day, and I was like, hmm, like side-eyeing them. They don't really look like they live together. They look quite young. They're riding around on their skateboards and bikes. I was a bit like, hmm. However, we don't know what environment their home environment is like. They might be in an abusive household. They might not even have a bedroom in their house. They might have just come back from uni and their family has moved to a new flat and there's no space for them. There's all sorts of circumstances we can never know about. So I just think it, you know, humans naturally judge. Like I don't blame you for making an assumption, but I do blame you if you blast it on the internet and publicly shame someone for something that you're not 100% sure of the context of yourself. It becomes a way of showing just how much you care. I actually think it's kind of like, you know the whole thing of like, how people display their houses perfectly and their lives perfectly on Instagram. I think an extension of that is being like, look at that person being so bad because it's like highlighting how self-aware you are and how cool you are and how you're just so, so like, conscientious and careful. I'd much rather that people put that energy into doing something that will be more helpful and bring along like positive impact. So like uh, there's a lady on TikTok who has printed loads of NHS, I think they're like ear guards for the face masks with her 3D printer and she's posting them to like all of her local hospitals. I think that's a great thing you can do to channel that energy into something like that is helpful and gonna help, help with the whole issue <laughs> but if you are genuinely concerned about a neighbor and their behavior do drop them a little message like or write a little message post it under their door or maybe like stick stick like a more generalized message on your like notice boards near your flats or whatever like you know if you're actually very worried like try and do something that will help <laughs> as opposed to just like shout about it on the internet okay mascara is on I have basically done my makeup. Oh, I know what I'm gonna wear on my lips. This is what I've been wearing on my lips. 
nearly every day pretty much since I got it. This is the Hourglass uh, Lip Oil in Cameo. I don't love the colour but my god it fixes my lips and it bloody should for the price tag for what I spent on this. It is definitely a big help. However I would like to add a little line to my lips to make them look bigger. Actually I might just stick with this as I think the mattes of the lips goes with the matte of the eyes. This is the only lip liner I brought. I brought hardly any lip products. I just wanna wear a red lip at the moment, but I didn't bring any, cause I was like, well, I'm with my boyfriend. I can't kiss him if I wear red, but like, oh, anyway. This is such a first world problem. Uh, this is the Kylie Jenner Dolce K lip liner. Their lip liners are also incredible. Yeah, I just follow the line of my lips really and just hope it looks normal. That is my makeup done. Would you like to see it? Yeah. This is what we're up to with that. The eyes are not that well blended because I use an incredibly dark color, but I quite enjoy this combo. Maybe I'll do it again. I think it's nice with the gray top. So on that note, thank you for watching. I'd love to hear your thoughts on what I discussed today because there's been a lot of thoughts floating about in my mind uh, during this whole quarantine period. And I wonder if you've had the same ones, if you feel differently, it's lovely where we all have different opinions. This is a good thing. So let me know in the comments because I love reading my comments. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in my next video. Ah, oh no, my necklace went indoors. <laughs> went indoors, what? I should probably also do the thing where I'm over here and I'm like, hey, here's some things you can watch because you can watch these things and you can probably also subscribe somewhere in this general area. Please do subscribe. It's nice when people enjoy watching me. <laughs>